said so many questions we just don't have answers to right now. This investigation in the very preliminary stages, it will last well into tonight and even in the days to come. There is a lot of information still to learn. We want to tell you what we do know because we have information about exactly what happened when in those very first moments. Ellen PD told us how quickly they respond, what happened when officers got there. Let's listen to that. Three minutes of being dispatched. Officers arrived on scene and encountered the suspect almost immediately, still firing gun, gunshots. Officers exchanged gunshots with that suspect and ultimately that suspect did die at the scene. We are trying to confirm if that suspect died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound or was killed by officers at this time. Leave the suspect acted alone, a lone shooter here, a lone gunman, meaning there is no more active threat in downtown Louisville. And that is the, the news that we've heard for the last couple of hours now. So uh, we had a lot of people bringing in their responses, um, just talking about what a heavy moment this was for the, the Louisville community this morning. The Archbishop of Louisville also giving a statement moments ago saying, my heart is heavy as we learn about another mass shooting now in our own community, even with our Easter hopes so recently renewed. We have been quickly reminded that we still live in the shadow of the cross, the cross of senseless violence. Well, for now, please join with me in praying for those who've died and for those who have been injured and for their families. Let us also pray for all in our community as we deal with this tragedy. And it is just so interesting to even bring up Easter. If, if you are a believer, if you've been to church, they talk about, you know, a lot of people are living through that Friday and the Saturday in the darkness, but to know that there is a Sunday and hopefully there is light at the end of the tunnel when you when you see something like this. Happen Certainly so a really, on. really hard day for Louisville, something that's been happening all over the country. We just recently were reporting on Nashville, a school shooting in Nashville. Right. Now a bank shooting has happened in our own city. Um, so difficult for us, for the people who are working in downtown Louisville, for all of the emergency responders who right. had to run to that scene. And it's hard because you, you know, especially in our business and those of you watching on television, I don't know if desensitized is the word because it's happening just so frequently. Um, and then it hits home, mm -hmm. you know, and then we want to go back just real quickly to that JCTC shooting. Again, this happening uh, just hours after the bank shooting this morning. JCTC has just released a response today saying all campuses are clear and closed for the day out of respect for those involved in the shootings that have occurred in our city. We can confirm there was a shooting outside of the technical campus building A and there is no active aggressor on our campuses. All Jefferson campuses are clear with the exception of the technical campus, of course, and that is where LMPD continues to remain at this hour investigating the shooting that happened there. One dead, one injured. A really, really busy morning for LMPD officers. I can imagine most are focused right here around downtown right now. Mm -hmm. um, but they have said they have plenty of resources all over the city yeah. to respond to everything. We also know there's a family assistance center now opened up in downtown Louisville. Mayor Craig Greenberg tweeting about it just here in the last few minutes, saying if you have a, you are a victim yourself, if you you were at the bank, you know someone who was, you're a family member trying to connect with your family, you can go right now to the Kentucky International Convention Center, that's third and market. Victims, families, everyone can head to this location. It is the best and easiest way for you to get up to date information. We know that that is, um, aside from safety, one of the most important things that police and, and other city leaders are doing, which is trying to notify these families. Right. And you know, and you heard from Mayor Craig Greenberg, who obviously is no stranger, unfortunately, mm -hmm. to being put face to face with a gun. It wasn't too long ago during his campaign for mayor that he had someone come into his campaign office and, and shoot at him. Fortunately, he was just crazed. He came out okay on this, but a lot of people just trying to comprehend the magnitude of this morning. And again, we're just one of so many communities that are having to deal with this. We have our Travis Brees who's going to be making his way um, over here. Travis, you've, you've spoken to a number of people now who were witness to what happened today on the outside. I think for me, it's just the, through speaking to people, learning that people were witnessing a war zone. I mean, people were witnessing a firefight, you know, through a, a glass window. It's just so extremely something you don't think you're gonna wake up to on a Monday morning, and it's so hard. Um, I believe we have the sound um, from one of the witnesses describing what he thought was a swift response uh, as the officers arrived. He thought that they were very brave. I'm not sure if we're able to pull that up at the moment.
I, I never thought it would happen directly across the street from my office. And, you know, I wish it never, never had, but I was glad the police arrived incredibly quickly. They, they were here very fast, and uh, I'm checking the timestamps on my video later. I mean, within, you know, two minutes, he's he's down. The shooter's down. So I think they did as good a job as they could do. As uh, J.D. Worley, who works at a medical supply company right across the street from the bank, and, um, yeah, he has video of the whole thing. He wasn't comfortable sharing it with us at the moment because it's currently evidence, I mean, for this shooting. Uh, and so police told him, you know, we would advise you don't share that at the moment. So, um, you know, we told him as soon as he's willing to, you know, to share it with us. But, you know, with something like that, we um, we don't want to push him. Um, but, yeah, he he saw one officer go up quickly at first and, um, you know, approach the lobby and get shot. Uh, he said that officer popped back up quickly. Um, I, I mean, it, it could be that that's one of the two that was hospitalized. Uh, in this shooting, but um, yeah, we're, we'll maybe try to go speak with um, JD if his if his building, if they're able to get out of the building at this point. Um, but when we spoke to him, yeah, maybe two, three hours ago at this point, uh, he said, um, yeah, we, we can't get out. We're just kind of, we're hunkered down here for the moment at right. least. And Travis, you've been all over downtown today um, responding to multiple different things. And, and what has been the mood in downtown? Try to paint a picture for us here. It's, I, I was at the, uh, the Jefferson Community College mm -hmm. uh, JCTC shooting, which you know, police were like, "This is not connected." We want to emphasize that this is not connected, but it's it's so weird because it's such a beautiful day outside, and everyone's just like their heads are just like twirling around 100 miles an hour, and um, people just people were, were untrusting of us. You know, they're like, "We don't want to talk to the media at the moment." It's just it's people it's are lot. super on edge right now. It's very tough out there. Certainly a fearful situation. I mean, you hear about a, a mass shooting in one location. We've got reports of another shooting. We, we've seen the officers running from scene to scene. I mean, that is, that is a scary situation for us. Luckily, we're told now, no active threats right no. now in downtown Louisville. No, and he, you, you mentioned JD was just one of several people. We had that first initial police response. People immediately started congregating, getting their phones out, recording. And there are those videos that we've seen on social media. You're hearing the pop, pop, pop. I counted at least five, um, and to whether or not that was part of the, you know, the police engaging with the shooter, I, I don't know, but there is enough where you see police running out of the building, mm -hmm. telling all the civilians around, get out of your car, get away, there's an active shooter in the bank, and those are just words you, it's just crazy to yeah. hear that, you know, and, and unfold on, a, on camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, um, I, don't, I don't know how you know, people who live and work in that area are going to feel, you know, the next week, you know, when they go to work, when they go to Louisville Bats game. It's just, you know, you don't know how, how long this is going to stick with us, I guess. We've seen a lot of reports here on social media of other businesses just closing down for the day mm -hmm. in downtown Louisville. We know that JCTC closed down for the day. Um, I'm seeing other businesses saying, don't, don't come to work if you haven't gotten here yet. If you've left for lunch, go home. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like, like the downtown area just shutting down right now. Just needing a breather and to take all of this in. Um, it, it's been a lot. And again, if you are just joining us for victims in this mass shooting that took place at Old National Bank in the 300 block of East Main. Again, you know that building, that slanted roof everyone sees driving through Spaghetti Junction. Um, it, it's one of the cooler architectural parts of our skyline. Um, and that is where that happened on the first floor in a conference room right there. You see it there. Um, the first floor right there, you had a number of people going in for a board meeting around 8.30 this morning when someone who were being told from LMPD was either a former or possibly current employee at that bank. We know the bank had not opened for business yet, so it was someone who had access. Um, and I'm sorry, Lena, go ahead and say that one more time. We're going to go ahead and, and read. We now are getting statements from um, so many people, and right. including the bank here. We're told that there are leaders from the bank actually um, heading to Louisville right now. It's a national bank heading to Louisville. Well, and they said in response to the tragic shooting this morning at our Preston Point location in downtown, members of our executive team, including the CEO, Jim Ryan, are en route to Louisville. While there have been reports of multiple casualties by police, we have been assured the situation is no longer active and authorities continue to assess the scene. And then actually hearing from Jim Ryan himself, the CEO, he said the safety of old National Bank employees and everyone we serve in our banking center locations is paramount. So we will more than likely be hearing from them as well. Our Eric and Haley still at the scene today. Yeah, let's check back in with them now, guys. You have been out there 
all morning long. I'm actually talking to the witnesses as they were running from the building. Can you give us a sense of what you're seeing now? Yeah, it, things have calmed down when it comes to the amount of police officers and members of law enforcement that are here, but that does not mean the size of the actual scene that's blocked off has decreased at all. No, not at all. And like Travis was mentioning, he was at that other shooting at JCTC. He saw a lot of the marked vehicles leave here when they went to JCTC. They just took off that way. But in their place, we see a lot of unmarked police vehicles, a lot of crime scene technicians, vehicles like that that we know are now going to begin this long process of trying to figure out exactly what happened here scientifically, not just by talking to people and interviewing people, but using ballistics, using all of those different blood spatter techniques to find out what went down here on the first floor today. Now we know what we've heard, right? It just after around 830, the calls came in for service that there was an active shooter down here at the old National Bank building. Yeah, and we were here within a matter of minutes of that. And the first thing that we noticed was police officers with their long guns had them trained on the building and were moving tactically around the building. And that's when we realized we are, we were here a lot faster than we expected to be. Right. And we had to take a step back and, and kind of assess our own safety. Uh, but in doing that, in, in you know, obeying the, the, the request of Metro Police to get to a safe place, we found three people who were really trying to do the same thing, only our stories were vastly different. We were there trying to get a story. They were running for their lives. And, and that's what we found out during the confines of our conversation. One in particular talked about being inside that conference room and seeing the long gun come in and start firing. And that's when you have to, in a very cerebral way, very quickly decipher what's happening and, and figure out how to best save yourself. And that's when he right. uh, and as many people as, as could made every effort possible to get out. And, and he even talks about having blood splatter on his back right so shoulder blade. Mm -hmm. And at the point when he was talking about that is when you really started to see the weight of what had happened land on him. I was going to say, the more that he talked in, in, in a situation where you would think that the further away you get from the trouble, the more calm that you would be, the more he talked about what was happening, the more you could see that he was really realizing the gravity, the adrenaline was wearing off and the fear was really picking up. The fight or flight was gone and he was just really feeling what had just happened to him. Another one of the men that we talked to said that he was on his phone in a staircase. I think he said mm -hmm. he was going back and forth. Between. He had been in the conference room, I think he said, and then he left the conference room. At 842, he looked at his phone and he heard what he thought was construction because they've been working on that building. They've been doing some renovations. So when he heard the banging, which we now know to be gunfire, he thought it was some sort of construction that was going on inside the building there. And so that's when we started to learn about the, uh, the, the the number of casualties, which we've landed at, at four, as we understand right now, plus the shooter themselves has been killed. And then we have a number of people over at University Hospital that are being treated, particular concern being paid to the police officer who has spent a large amount of this morning in surgery. No update on, on the condition of that officer mm -hmm. as of right now, uh, but, but our minds continually go in that direction. Right, we've been hearing that the, the officer is in surgery. The condition is critical. We know another police officer was also taken with um, non-life threatening injuries is what we were told. Non-life threatening injuries to the hospital. The hospital went on and off of lockdown a couple of times this morning, which kind of gave us an early indication that a police officer might be hurt. We know that the hospital going into lockdown, um, not only in its proximity, but we were hearing after the fact, after we were aware that this scene had calmed down a little bit, that the hospital had gone into lockdown. So um, that kind of makes a couple of alarm bells go off in our heads. We've been working on, on you know, streets long enough to know that when lockdown is happening after the fact, sometimes that is what is being indicated there. People are angry. Uh, people are afraid. Both of those things can be true at the same time. We know that this is an area that is very congested, especially at nine o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. on a Monday. This is the heart of the business district. Um, we also know, we've heard a lot of people say, oh, well, I don't feel comfortable in downtown. And, and, and I don't know that that's a fair thing to say because what we're learning from not just the shooting, but we're aware of what's been going on around the country. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. So it's not a, I'm not gonna go to downtown or I'm not gonna go to this part. That, that, that's not a thing, that doesn't exist. This is the heart of the social fabric of our city. 
there's going to be 700,000 people down here in three weeks celebrating the largest annual fireworks show in North America. As you brought that up earlier, I was thinking, wow, I was really down. I was head down here on Saturday at a game. I've gone to games here before. I was at uh, Lynn Family Stadium for a game. I comfortably have gone, gone to multiple events down here. This can be scary and traumatic and you can still enjoy those different events down here because like you just said, it's, there's no rhyme or reason right. to that. But it's hard to look around down here and think of all, you know, all of the walks that I've done at Waterfront Park. When Forecastle is here, all the events that we've gone to down here that are just such bright, happy memories. And now just down the street, a horrible tragedy in Louisville's history. I think one thing that is very worthwhile to point out and, and is smart and accurate to point out is the Metro Police response. Yes. Because Metro Police have been under a microscope, not just by this community, but from the federal government government, the Department of Justice, and they're knee deep in coming up with that consent decree to figure out exactly how that's going to look. Metro Police, in theory, could have every reason to just feel defeated, but they did not. And I remember talking to the police chief directly a few weeks ago, and she's saying this police department will stand up, they will answer the call, and they will answer it the right way. We've talked to a lot of people today. We've had our entire fleet of reporters in the field, and not a one of us has heard anything that is disparaging about the way Metro Police and all of its partners handled this. Right, and even in the way in which they handled us. Us. I was going to say yeah. pesky reporters that show up and, you know, we're just trying to do our job too. But we were treated with compassion and kindness when they could have, you know, yelled at us in a lot more words right. than they did. But they said, you know, you guys need to get back to X spot to, to be safe and get back to this part. And it is scary when you think about how quickly we got here. Um, there were police officers that were still outside of the building with long, gun, long guns trained on the building. And they described the police officers that got here initially without the rest of the force with them yes. that went straight in. And, yes. and engage that shooter. Yes, it's it's really just a horrific situation here today. We know we're expecting to learn more information at a press conference later on at three o'clock. That'll likely involve all kinds of officials from LMPD and FBI all the way to the governor, who we also heard from this afternoon. Emotionally, a very emotional sound from the governor. We do want to go ahead though and go back to you, Brooke and Shay, in the studio as we're learning more information and uh, just really send it back with heartfelt prayers for anyone that was involved with this today, that's gonna to be working through this, and just a message of um, seeking hope. help and finding hope in the little things you can when those opportunities present themselves. Okay, well said. Haley, Eric, thank you so much. Now we do want to um, fill you in on what we know about the victims, which is very little right now. We know four people shot in the bank, dead in the bank, eight people taken to the hospital, and, and what little information we have, Mayor Craig Greenberg has talked a little bit about the victims today. Everyone around our city, around the country, around the world, pray with us for those who are currently at UofL Hospital injured, fighting for their lives as a result of another act of gun violence. It's a, it's a hard one um, to take in, and, and we've mentioned this too with Mayor Craig Greenberg knowing very well what it feels like to have a gun pulled on you when he had that same thing happen somewhat during um, his campaign in his campaign office. Um, so he knows he has been fighting here in Louisville to get things done. I know there's a debate, but today it's going to be all about the victims. It's going to be about these four people who went to work and are not coming home um, and the eight others who are in the hospital right now. And our Bobby McSwine has been there for the last few hours just kind of keeping tabs on, on the families going in and out. We know two officers, Bobby, are among those who were injured. What have you seen? What do you know at this point? Well, we've seen dozens of law enforcement come in and out of the hospital. We also seen members of the bomb squad. We also saw Deputy Mayor David James come to make an appearance here at that hospital. We know that there are eight victims, two of which are officers, one in critical condition in surgery. Five people did not make it to this hospital. Four were civilians, like you said, just going to work this morning and did not make it out of that bank alive. Now, we have been waiting for an update from UofL Hospital. They just let us know many 
minutes ago. They will instead join the 3 p.m. press conference with Mayor Craig Greenberg and Governor Andy Bashir. Dr. Jason Smith is expected to give an update about what's going on here at this hospital. As I've said, I suspect that we've been waiting because they want to give us up to the um, up to the minute information about what is going on here at U of L Hospital. We will continue to provide this coverage online for you. Please stick with us. For now, I'm live at U of L Hospital. U of L. Bobby McSwine, WHAS 11 on your side. All right, Bobby, thank you so much. And again, a lot of information coming in, but there's still a lot of information we don't know. I've even received some text and seeing Twitter and Facebook feeds of people going, who is this? Why did he do that? There's a lot of speculation, a lot of names and pictures going on on social media. We're not going to get into that until we have official word. Um, we we want to know who the victims are. And again, that's going to be something that the families are dealing with. Police, this is, this is the moment that we just have to wait for. A lot of questions that are going to go unanswered until we get that official confirmation. We know there are um, a lot of different responses coming in right now. The governor has made his way here. Unfortunately, we just shared with you his um, very emotional comments as he, you may have known um, at, at least one of the people who was killed here as he has very close ties to the old National Bank. Um, but this is a, a statement coming from Morgan McGarvey. So it reads here, today is a dark day for our community. Just one week after a heartbreaking mass shooting at a school in Nashville, we mourn the loss of at least four more people in Louisville. These innocent lives were taken by another senseless act of gun violence, this time in downtown Louisville. It goes on to say here, I am grateful for the brave officers at LMPD who responded to the scene and no doubt saved lives. My thoughts are with the officers who were shot at the scene. When we know, um, for reference, two officers were shot at the scene. He says thank you to every first responder from the fire department to EMS and everyone in between who responded and helped our community when we needed it most. All right, well, uh, and again, this all coming from our Congressman Morgan McGarvey, who's continuing to say the community is one of far too many impacted by gun violence. Thoughts and prayers for those we've lost, for those who are injured and their loved ones and families are appreciated, but today serves as a stark reminder that we need to address gun violence at the national level so no other family loses a son, a daughter, and a loved one. Louisville is a big small town where everybody knows everybody and in the coming days we will lend support to our neighbors and loved ones, the families of those we've lost and our first responders. We will get through this tragedy as a community. And again, so many people talking about our LMPD family, our, that community of police officers, the first couple we know from witnesses accounts that they ran into that building. They didn't wait for backup. We see it in video. We see it in, in the witnesses telling us moments after it happened that they went there. They even saw one of the officers get shot, fall to the ground and get back up and continue doing what so many probably wouldn't be able to do in that moment. LMPD tells us that the officers who got there first were hearing gunfire and ran toward the gunfire, um, most certainly saving lives. Of course, unfortunately, four people were killed there in the bank early this morning and eight others were taken to the hospital. Let's go ahead and fill you in on exactly what we know about this so far. Um, if you're just now joining us or you haven't been with us, we have been on the air for several hours now, but let's get you some of the facts. So Brooke, this happened 830, 840 this morning. Yeah, one of the viewer accounts said he was on his phone when he heard those shots fired, looked down. It was 842. We know that this happened over several minutes um, and it was inside the old National Bank. And again, LMPD confirming a total of five people are dead, but only four of them are the victims who are inside that board meeting. That fifth person from LMPD saying that that fifth person was the shooter. Whether or not he was taken out by the police officers or took his own life, that has yet to be said. And at least two officers were shot, one of whom was critically injured and taken right into surgery. And we do know that there has been a family assistance center set up for anyone involved in today's shooting at the Kentucky International Convention Center. That's at third and market the entrance there. Anyone who has a victim, if you're a family member, if you are a witness to this, please go to that location for those updates. And now we want to get out to Isaiah Kim Martinez. Isaiah Kim Martinez, he has been um, following this all morning long. He has been involved in all of the press conferences, getting the latest information. Right now it is just a waiting game for us. We, like you, are seeing a lot of stuff on social media, but we are only reporting what we're hearing confirmed from police, from the governor, from the mayor. Um, Isaiah has the latest on that. Isaiah, have you learned anything new? What can you tell us here right now? Well, Shay, it's basically that family assistance center, which is 
obviously so important in this situation, not just for families or people directly affected, but those who know someone who is. I mean, this is for anybody. Uh, our Grace, Grace McKenna has actually been giving us updates from there. She says she hasn't seen any uh, foot traffic flow in and out uh, of the convention center just down the road here in downtown. Um, so not just yet, but it's taking a while for this information obviously to circulate. Uh, the mayor tweeted about it. I'm sure he's put it on all his social medias, uh, emailed it out, I'm sure, to, to all his folks to get it out to as many people as possible. So, of course, we want to stress that information. As far as some of the details of this, this shooting, of this tragedy in this case, we don't know much more than what we were given in that press conference. Um, we have heard some details, but a lot of those are unconfirmed at this time. So we are working, again, to get a lot of those um, you know, details confirmed as quickly as possible as far as the nature of this incident. But it looks like 3 p.m. will be the time that we get more, uh, at least confirmed answers at this time. Isaiah, can you tell us a little bit about what it looks like where you're at right now? Uh, I know that you are near the scene. Exactly where are you compared to where everything happened this morning? Yeah, Shay, right now we're on Main, uh, Main Street and Jackson near the intersection there. I'll step out of the way. We're basically in front of, of the bank itself or where the bank is located inside. So this is this stretch of Main Street going all the way down uh, west in this case uh, is blocked off significantly. We actually had to stage the media at the stage quite a few uh, intersections going kind of towards Jackson Street along Main. We were uh, situated over by Hancock. So we're basically right here close uh, to Slugger Field and against the grain uh, restaurant here downtown. So this is where we've been uh, over the last hour or so, hour plus in this case. Uh, and, and this is what we're looking at. The way I would compare the energy now to where it was before, it, it's a lot more quiet. It's almost very, um, very solemn right now. Initially, it was kind of go, 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 go. We saw uh, uh, police officer cars going, the media, us, we were trying to get to the next press conference, but things have calmed a little bit, but by no means in a positive way, just calmed in kind of a more of a sense of letting everything set in, ourselves included. We were told from the beginning that they had believed this was a lone active shooter. Um, and then we also learned around that 10, 30, 11 o'clock news conference that um, he died at the scene, that he was taken down or took his own life within minutes of this initial shooting, but really an hour, hour and a half later is when we got that confirmation. Do you know if anyone asked officials about why there was such a, a time span in between when we thought there might still be an active threat to the downtown Louisville area? We had about three, four minutes, I would say, to get a few questions in. Unfortunately, Brooke, that was not one of the ones that was asked. I'm sure it will be asked, if not from others, from us here today, as far as what led to kind of those discrepancies and maybe the time span from, from one update to the next. But as we all understand, and this has been consistent with the way LMPD has, has operated for some time here when it comes to these incidents, they do not want to uh, jump on information too early and say something that isn't true and then have to retract that. So even in this case, we've had active aggressor before it was said active shooter. In this case, we gave the total number, but we didn't update until later that one of the five dead was actually uh, the shooter in this situation. Uh, we, of course, learned later also that the, shoot, uh, the shooter in this case uh, also uh, has a connection to the bank itself, being a, a potential former worker here. So a lot of these, the wording of this, will continue to get updated as we go forward. And my understanding is that's why it's taken some time, at least from a police perspective. There on the scene, Isaiah, um, typically in, in a situation like this where you have a really active or large rather large crime scene, uh, they bring in a mobile command center. Have you seen that happen here today? And, and have you seen other agencies coming to Louisville, perhaps Shepherdsville or Jefferson Town on scene? Well, the one actually right behind me, you can actually see it once uh, the van moves out of the way. That is a command unit from my understanding. It's hard to read from this. Alyssa can probably zoom up and give you a better idea, but that is what we saw uh, drive up about, uh, say about 20, 30 minutes ago. There is something going on right now with a van backing up and I'm not exactly sure, but that is the center right now of where information is being sent to and from, at least from our point of view. Again, we've been staged here uh, for a bit now. So that's what we're looking at, at least at this time. That looks to be the main command unit. Right. 
and we assume that the coroner is going to be on scene for much of that um, as to whether or not that that's what the van is. But um, our Isaiah Kim Martinez, again, at the scene, he has been there for the last few hours. Now, as all of us have just been focused right there on the 300 block of Main Street for what's going to be taking shape here. And we know that this investigation is going to last well into the night. If you are anywhere around Louisville Slugger in that downtown area, you're not going to be getting in and out if you are just the general public at this point. They say right now there really is no reason for anyone to be coming downtown. That is unless you work at the bank, you know someone who works at the bank and you're looking for information, you can go to the convention center um, down there on market if you are interested in that. So we did hear from LMPD just uh, about an hour and a half ago. We want to give you a listen into that so you can have the most up-to-date information. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Chief Paul Humphrey, Louisville Metro Police. Again at 8.30 this morning, approximately 8.30 this morning, uh, Louisville Metro Safe received a report of shots fired and a possible active shooter at 333 East Main Street at the Old National Bank. Within three minutes of being dispatched, officers arrived on scene and encountered the suspect almost immediately still firing gun gunshots. Officers exchanged gunshots with that suspect and ultimately that suspect did die at the scene. We are trying to confirm if that suspect died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound or was killed by officers at this time. At least two officers were shot during this exchange of, of gunfire. One is currently in surgery at University of Louisville Hospital. At least four more victims were confirmed to be deceased inside the location, as well as eight that are now currently being treated at the University Hospital. Two are critical, one of those being the officer. We're currently working to identify all of the victims, work with their families for reunification and provide services to the families and the victims. The investigation, I want to re reiterate, is ongoing. This will be a, a long scene. It will take uh, pretty much into the night. Um, so I still ask that the public avoid the area. I want to reiterate that there is no active threat. Uh, we believe this is a lone uh, gunman involved in this that did have a connection to the bank. We're trying to establish what that connection was to the business, but it appears he was a previous employee. Um, it is clear from the officer's response that they absolutely saved people's lives. This is a tragic event, uh, but it was, it was the heroic response of officers that made sure that no more people were more seriously injured than what happened. Uh, we will continue to provide updates uh, as soon as possible. We will have another press briefing following this at 3 p.m. today. And just in the last few moments, we got some really encouraging updates from U of L Hospital. That's where um, multiple patients were sent from the bank to the hospital. And some of those numbers just now coming in that U of L treated a total of nine patients, two were officers, seven were civilians. And one of those officers uh, who we've spoken about is still critical with critical injuries. We were told they were taken right into surgery earlier. And the better news out of all nine, three, at least three people have been discharged. So that is promising. And we also know that Dr. Jason Smith, who is the U of L Health Chief Medical Officer there with University Hospital, he will be a part of that three o'clock news conference to update us uh, furthermore on the people that are still injured and possibly the severity of their injuries. So three discharged out of the nine that is one up from what we had been told earlier of eight so again four people did die at the bank this morning nine taken to U of L hospital two of those were officers one in critical condition still being treated seven civilians were treated three discharged and it's small brook but it's big in a, in a day like today it's just that little the little bit of news that we needed to hear we want to go back live to our uh, gmk's eric and haley who have been there all morning long talking with the witnesses out there some good news but still a, just a really horrific morning that's that's only just now settling in as to this happening in our backyard guys don't don't hesitate to point out the good news. I mean, I think that I think that's where we are. We yeah. are we're happy to hear any kind of good news like that because there have been points in the morning where we weren't sure that was going to be the case. Right. As soon as you said that, Brooke, I was like, okay, that's good. That's good. You have to find those little glimmers of hope to really work through a situation that is such 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 a traumatic event happening. And like you guys said, right in our backyards, uh, it's really difficult to think about it. And it's really especially difficult now that we're sitting here really processing through as the scene is clearing out exactly what they went through today, what we witnessed here today. Um, we heard about this just after a third 
30, uh, and we made our way here immediately. We, I mean, we were out the doors of the station within five minutes on our way down here. I, I don't even think we realized we how it. quickly we got yeah. here. Truly. Because the first thing that we saw were officers with their long guns trained on the building and the moving in tactical positions around the building. And then we met three people that were inside the conference room, or two of them were inside the conference room at the time that the shots were going off. And what they described to us was just this fear and concern and blood splatter on, on one of their shoulders from one of their friends or, or co-workers who right. we, we still don't know who that person is. Right. Then we hear from the governor who's explaining to us that his personal connection to this, he knows, I believe, two of the people who lost their lives here. So it's one of those mornings where we are processing something that we see and we talk about all the time around the country. And I don't say that lightly, but we do see and talk about it around the country all the time. But this is home. This is us. These are people that we are going to know on some level. We are going to be affected by this in some way. And we've got a police officer fighting for his life over at University Hospital mm -hmm. at, at the at the only trauma center in, in the area. And, one of our politicians made a statement and said that this Louisville really is a little big town and that's never been on more display than when you listen to Governor Andy Bashir, the governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, talking about how he knew one of the people injured and one of the people killed here today. It's so difficult to think about the governor himself being so emotional because this is where he ran his AG campaign. We know that there's multiple businesses in this building, but he did say that Old National, that is his bank. That is the bank where he chose chooses to do business. So he knew these people. We all have those people in our lives, whether it's your barista, your bank teller, Whoever maybe it's it your hairdresser. Those are people that you don't think about in those situations and in those settings until something like what happened today happens. And now we just kind of try to think as thoroughly about the people who have lost their lives, the people whose families are going to be getting that call today, the people who currently know I have not yet talked to my brother or my wife, my husband, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that are spinning in their heads right now, fearing the worst, and we know that the, that phone call is coming. Yeah, I, I, I just can't imagine that pain, that trauma. Um, it's something that we talk about in Louisville a lot, the trauma that is associated with, with gunshots, just hearing gunshots, but then living through a situation like this. We all the time say non-life threatening gunshot wound, but any gunshot wound is causing a trauma. Yeah. It is causing a deep wound even after you're discharged from the hospital. So Brooke and Shay, we know that you guys uh, have some questions that you'd like to ask us. Um, we're ready to answer anything that you yes, might, anything you might have to throw our way. Just still sinking it all in, but you know, you mentioned that the whole, I, I've spoken with our UofL trauma surgeons talking about the non-life threatening versus life threatening and, and really when it comes down to it every single one of those victims there today is going to suffer something that's going to be more than just those injuries whether it's mental physical you know life threatening they're versus all life changing they they're are they're life altering right you know right. They, they, yeah. you could be paralyzed I, I you just never know what that means to them I think we should have a bigger conversation about this at some point because you're absolutely right. We say non-life-threatening gunshot wound and maybe you, you live through it, of course. I, I, I get the point that we're making, but you're right. The, the trauma that's associated with that, I, my house was almost broken into. It didn't happen, but was almost broken into and I was out of commission for days just yeah. trying to process that. And so to, to think through what an active shooter scenario looks like or being shot looks like it deserves a much bigger conversation. Obviously, we're seeing the same thing that you're seeing right now. Uh, I don't know if there's anything too too big about it, but uh, they're bringing in a wrecker, um, and we just saw a car go through the police tape over there. But it's a good time, Haley, to remind people that the police scene here still appears to be the same size as it always has been, uh -huh. but the number of cars and police units that were here has decreased by 90% at well, this point. Well, you have to think too, obviously, like you said, we just saw this tow truck pull in. There's gonna be cars that, that need to be towed for people who drove here that will never get those cars back people that are at the hospital injured. We do know that a few people have been discharged, which is great news. Um, but then obviously too, whoever the shooter was had to get here somehow. So that car will likely be taken. I'm sure that it has in some way, shape or form probably already been processed to be, make sure that there's no other um, 
anything that could yeah. cause damage to anyone inside that car and, and has been processed through in that way. That's a good point. But even, you know, thinking about what is here on the scene still, all of those shell casings that are still here on the scene, any kind of DNA, blood splatter, those kinds of things are going to take possibly months to really process through on the scene. And I'm I'm guessing they will, if the shooter drove here, probably tow that car somewhere else to process. Right, so you'll have the technical processing of the scene. At some point, someone's got to come in and clean up the broken glass and, and all of that. Yeah. So what we're basically doing is just laying the foundation for the amount of time it's going to take to get not just this building, but this area, broken shape, back up and, and uh, ready to accept the amount of people that are here on any given weekday at this time of day. Mm -hmm.